We're delighted to share with you ideas today for children's programming. And what we really want to encourage you to do is to dream big. Like any good collaborative theme, um, dream big is very flexible. You can take it in a lot of directions. You can think way outside the box this year. As you've noticed from your manual, um, you might be thinking of literal nighttime events, maybe dreams, metaphorical or otherwise daydreams, big things. And today we're actually going to be sharing a little of everything. Our ideas um, are across the spectrum from ages 0 to 10, suitable for big and small libraries, and we hope that you'll find a few things to take home with you today. We're going to be going quickly from idea to idea, sharing details on some and not others, but don't worry, our handout is immense. We've made you an extra mini manual, and that is going to be available on the CLA website. In fact, it's up already. So the first thing we're going to do today is to put you to sleep. Here's a lullaby for you. Bed is too small for my tiredness. Give me a hilltop with trees. Rock me to sleep in a cradle of dreams. Send me a lullaby of leaves. Okay, so now that you are all relaxed, we're going to talk about story time. So one of our first ideas is to have a baby sto or a um, bedtime story. And so that goes against the grain of um, what you'd expect a story time, loud kids running around, but have stories that will lull them to sleep, um, your favorite bedtime stories, or stories, stories specifically about um, going to bed, including lullabies and songs. Now this would also be a great time to rejuvenate or and start a PJ story time. If you don't know what a PJ story time is, it's a story time where kids come to the library listen to stories and they come dressed in their pajamas. Usually this is in the evening, but can be done at any time. And the added bonus is the librarian or this person doing the story time gets to wear their PJs too. <laughs> so when you're, if you do a story time that's a bedtime story time themed, you can also do a craft of the cow jumping over the moon. And you know, bedtime story time isn't just for babies. Um, you might do a spooky or scary story time for older kids, you can tell tales like the terrifying Japanese ghost story, The Boy Who Drew Cats, what happened when that little boy dreamed big. Scary and not so scary story time lends itself well to storytelling activities. And here's a sample activity for you. Um, with your kids, first brainstorm some things that you might need to get a good night's sleep. What would help you get a good night's sleep? A pillow. Oh yeah, a comfy blanket, a good night kiss. Brainstorm with the kids a while, and when the ideas start getting kind of silly, then brainstorm a second list. What are things that will not help you get a good night's sleep? A crying baby. A squeaky door. You can use that as a writing or storytelling prompt. Um, in the manual, uh, we have a craft and a uh, prompt that you can use together. And here's how it works. You make your little craft like this, and you tell a story to each other. To get a good night's sleep, you need a cozy house, you need a comfy bed, you need a good night kiss, but you don't need a ghost. <laughs> so you can tell, have the kids tell those kind of surprising stories with or without the craft. Other um, bedtime stories you might include, maybe folk or fairy tales, which are bedtime stories that are told around the world. We have some good book lists for you in our mini manual. And those also lend themselves well to storytelling activities. At my branch, we've found that the kids can develop instant creativity if you pass out puppets first. Suddenly the kids are telling stories about the puppets, their puppets are telling stories, and that gives them a lot of ideas to actually do writing or drawing activities later. Another way you can use this theme, especially um, with older kids, or really for all ages, is to go the direction of bedtime here is morning on the other side of the world or vice versa. So if you have a really good idea from the last summer from the One World Mini Stories, you can pull it out this year if you didn't get to do all your ideas last year. In the manual, we have a story time uh, program for you from the country of Turkey. It includes a flannel board story, um, storytelling activity about the night the moon fell into the well and instructions for making simple shadow puppets. I found a great book called Rainy Days Shadow Theater that shows kids how to make shadow puppets using their hands with a few added props. Um, and we also are gonna be using YouTube to look at videos of actual Turkish shadow puppetry. 
Um, that's really fascinating for kids because of the multicultural aspect and also because they're going to get to hear the Turkish language, something that most of them are not going to be familiar with. So you don't have to just do story times or programs for kids. You can do story times and programs for their stuffed animals. So you can have a stuffed animal program where the kids bring their stuffed animal to the library and you do a story time and then the kids leave and the stuffed animal stays. So one thing you can do before everyone tucks in for bed though is you can make a quilt out of um, cut paper and then the kids can tuck their stuffed animal in under the quilt and leave for the night. So while the kids are sleeping and they're at home, you run around the library like a crazy person, <laughs> positioning them, doing different things. I had a couple teens help me with this program, so they were more creative than I was. And so here are some of the stuffed animals that um, participated in our stuffed animal sleepover. The next day, the kids come and pick up their stuffed animal. We had little donuts for them. Um, each stuffed animal also got a name tag, and each participant got a certificate saying that they participated in our sleepover. And if you don't want to just do story time for stuffed animals, think about doing a story time about <laughs> big animals. What are the biggest animals you can think of? You can read stories or use this for fiction, nonfiction, um, story time. Think about really big animals and how to bring those alive for kids. You probably aren't going to get a blue whale in the library, but if you have an outdoor space like a safe parking lot, you can trace that outline of a blue whale to give kids an idea of the scale of that animal. Or if you have a 300 foot piece of paper, you can make a giant uh, sequoia tree or a California redwood to show actual size. If your space is a little more limited, you might want to do something with showing life size, um, really big bugs or maybe footprints of animals. And if you're saying that animals are big, but they're not that big. California redwoods are big, but they're not that big. Help us dream big. Well. Um, you could take this out of this world. The universe is very big. Do a story time where you read stories or nonfiction about space and rockets and astronauts, maybe aliens. I liked um, using the book Higher Higher by Leslie Patricelli to get into this story time. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's the tale of a little girl who's being pushed on a swing by her father. And like all little kids, she's saying higher, higher. <laughs> And higher, higher in this case actually means going to outer space and giving high five to an alien child who must be doing the same thing on its planet. And this is a fun book to start a story time like this when you're, where you're going to be sharing fiction and nonfiction because you can bring that question up right away. Was this story real or was it imaginary? And of course, there's always going to be a kindergartner who's going to tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, I've swung into space, Miss Sarah. I've done that before. But most of the kids will start to understand that distinction. So then you can um, switch to a story like Franklin Branley's Is There Life in Outer Space? If you're going to be doing a space program, think about ways to partner with um, maybe local amateur stargazers or an observatory, large or small, to offer a star party. Even in Los Angeles, in our smoggy skies, we can still see the moon. And that's even more amazing if you look at it through a telescope. Or if you have an observatory that offers a star party in the evening, volunteer to come and tell stories there. Bring your library out of the library to your community. So while the kids are waiting, if you have a program at the library where they're um, looking through telescopes or having to take turns, you can do crafts, the dream catcher, or you could even make a glow stick butterfly. And the directions are all on the website as well. But another partnership you could do would be to partner with your local county park or state park and have them come out and talk about animals that are nocturnal or do a campfire story time that they might already be doing or vice versa, you could go there and do a story time at the campsite and um, bring it to the community that's staying at the campsite. Um, you can also include crafts where you make a fire similar to the one you'll see in the back that Barbara made, or a smaller version that fits on a CD. You can also make a s'mores necklace, also on the website, or just half s'mores, because that would be lots of fun. <laughs> um, maybe not feasible, although Barbara, I think, has a way of doing that. So, um. 
You can also take your star party in a different direction. Think about dreaming big as a way to encourage the kids' dreams and aspirations. There are a lot of really amazing picture book biographies that have been coming out in the last few years. So browse that section and find some good read aloud so that you can share stories of dreamers and doers with your kids. Um, tell their stories and then give the kids an opportunity to dream big on their own. You might have them make their own star, similar to what we have on Hollywood Walk of Fame. Make a big star cutout where the kids have room to write their name and then draw a picture or write about something that they might someday be known for. And who doesn't dream of being a superhero? So you could do a superhero story time. And you could read stories about superheroes. Recently, I saw at the library a superhero cookbook. So that could be a craft that you take one of those recipes or after reading story time you can have the kids make a cape and this is um, just half of a tote bag cut in half and they just decorate it with fabric marker um, or you could have a disco where you give the kids music you give them instruments you could even make instruments as the craft out of toilet paper and, um, rolls and beans and just have a big noisy party at the library that's what everybody wants to do. Um, and you know, of course, set the scene with the disco ball or bubbles, because everyone loves bubbles, and include stories and songs that deal with music, dancing, or just have the disco party. So well, those are um, all the ideas we're gonna share with you now, but there are many more, like I said, in our handout. Remember, all of our presentations, including the PowerPoints, video, and the, um, and us and manuals are on the CLA website. Also, we're librarians. We check our email all day. If you have questions about anything that we've talked about today or that you see in the manual, email us. We can call you back, send you pictures of crafts, talk you through something, help you brainstorm for your own library. We would love to do that. All right. Thank you. Thanks.